Hey guys, Trudy here, coming in to do that um, tag video that's going around about the top 10 pieces of advice, um, you, top 10 things you would tell a weight loss surgery pre-op person. So I thought I would come in and do my top 10, although I haven't written them down, so I'm just winging it, and uh, I tried to make this video earlier and got interrupted by a phone call, so I'll try and do the best that I remember, and um, see how we do. Um, my number 10 piece of advice, I will do this in reverse order, my top 10 would be to um, make sure you're doing this for the right reasons. Make sure you've made the decision to have weight loss surgery, whatever procedure, lap band, DS, VSG, RNY, whatever decision you're making, make sure you're making it for the right reasons. And that is such an individual thing that, you know, what my good reasons, my reasons may not be your reasons, um, but you have to be comfortable and committed to the decision that you made. So you've got to make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons. I'm going to sneeze periodically. I'm homesick from work today. Bear with me. I'm fighting one back right now. Um, my number nine reason, my number nine piece of advice or tip or whatever would be to um, don't compare your journey to anyone else's. Don't compare your weight loss to anyone else. Um, again, this is such an individual journey and our bodies are one of a kind and you may lose weight faster than somebody you may lose weight slower than someone you may lose more you may not lose as much you know it's such an individual thing I mean I did it in the beginning you know because there were some people especially in the YouTube community I found a bunch of people that we shared sort of the same if not exact surge anniversary. we were all around the same week and um, I found myself comparing to their journeys and you can't do that that was such a big source of stress for me because it was, you know, well, so-and-so had their surgery, you know, that day, so close to me, and they've lost 80 pounds, and I've only lost 60. Like, what the hell am I doing wrong? It's such an individual thing, guys. Don't compare your journey to anyone else's. Um, that was number nine. Number eight would be to um, find a support system. Whether it be with your friends and family, or through local support groups, YouTube, Obesity Help. Um, there's some other forums out there that I'm not very familiar with, although I, I do know that there are more that exist. Um, find a support system, because this is going to be a whole lot easier on you if you have that support. Um, I'm lucky. I have an amazing husband, wonderful kids. I'm going to cry. I'm trying not to. When I start talking about them, I get all, because they've been so amazing. And an example of my husband's ultimate support, he, we were talking last night, I am 10 pounds from goal. My weigh-in uh, yesterday morning was 190. My goal is 180. So I am 10 pounds from goal. And my husband didn't know it. He doesn't know what to get me for Christmas. He never knows. So his gift to me is to help me lose that last 10 pounds by the new year. I get all like, hmm, just to know, sorry, wow, that he supports me that much and he's willing to eat what I eat and to help me lose that last 10 pounds in the next, what, six weeks is just better than any present he could have wrapped and put under the tree. So find a support system, guys, and uh, YouTube is great for that. Um, I've always said that if you need help finding a support group in Ontario, Canada, let me know and, um, I will help you because I do believe that, you know, I, I've always said I was never one that believed in support groups and I only went to my first support group meeting out of obligation, sheer obligation, because my weight loss center told me I had to do it. Best piece of advice they could have given me. Um... I see I've lost track of the numbers already. I think that was eight. I don't know. Seven would be to take pictures as you progress through your journey so you can sort of help your brain wrap around what you, what you look like uh, because it is a mental journey as much as it is a physical journey and your brain sometimes has a hard time catching up. I mean, I've said in my previous videos, you know, I walk by mirrors sometimes or walk by glass, by windows and I don't think it's me. You know, it's a weird, weird thing not to recognize yourself in the mirror. And that started for me at around, 
I want to say about four or five months out, um, I started having issues recognizing myself in the mirrors and in the glass windows when I would walk by in a store or something. Um, yeah, it's tricky. Uh, number six would be to follow your instruction instructions from your weight loss center to the letter. Um, Pre-op diet, post-op diet, uh, make sure you follow those instructions to the letter because they're there for a reason and uh, you're not doing yourself any favors if you cheat, especially um, in the immediate stages pre-op and post-op. You know, we all make our goofs, you know, later on when what we eat is not as... I don't want to say not as important, but when you're when you're immediately pre-op and immediately post-op, there are physical repercussions for the choices you make. You know, if you cheat during your Optifast diet, especially with carbs, you're going to throw your Optifast right off. And it's just not worth it. Post-op, you risk doing physical damage to your pouch if you eat the wrong foods too soon, too soon out. So follow those instructions to the letter. Number five would be to, um, what else? Oh, ladies, this one's for you. Invest in a good bra. You're going to have to buy a new bra, like, repeatedly. I think I've bought six or something in the last six months alone. Because the girls have a mind of their own as time goes on. And I wasn't that well endowed before the surgery. Like, I was a... B, almost C cup, like I would buy a C, but it would be too big, and I'd buy a B, and it would be too small, and um, now I use a D, and I'll tell you why, take off my sweater, my wrap thing here, um, now, because of the excess skin, I'm finding that, and we're going to go down here, this part of my excess skin hangs over a bra, it's kind of hard to get in, so like, you get this part here that hangs over a bra, so I'm finding now that I'm having to pull all that in and keep it in the underwire. So it's increased my boob size as far as cup size goes because I'm having to mold and shape things to get the excess skin to go where I want it to go. So be ready for that. Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Um, what else? Oh, make... Number four, I guess, right now? I have no idea. Start making the changes that you're going to need to make post-op, pre-op. So, um, in the time that you're waiting to have the surgery, get all the NSAIDs out of your house. All the aspirin, Advil, Motrin, Midol. Oh, Midol might be acetaminophen. Anyway, anything that's not acetaminophen-based, get it out of your house. So stop taking all those NSAIDs before surgery. That way it's not sort of... I always took Advil. Before surgery, I was, if I had a headache, Advil, you know, my knees or my back and stuff would hurt, so I would take a leave. Um, but I had to get that all out of my house just to get rid of the temptation because, you know, it works so well. Um, but yeah, like get that out of your house. Um, start taking your vitamins so you can get into the routine of taking these vitamins pre op. Um, so that way it's not such a blow to your routine when you're, you know, when you're post-op. Get used to doing it now. Cut the caffeine out of your diet. Start getting used to drinking only water. Get rid of the pop. Huge, huge, huge. No soda post-op. It does, soda does nasty, nasty things to your stomach. And it's not just the carbonation. There's an acid in it that seriously corrodes your stomach. And when you have a pouch that's this size, you don't have much to play with. So you definitely don't want to be doing the damage to your pouch because if anything does go wrong, you got nothing left to work with. Cut the soda out. I had a soda, uh, I had a Diet Coke. I was at school and I was about maybe six or seven months post-op, I can't remember, and I was so thirsty. And you can't let yourself get thirsty. That's a serious, that's an indicator that you're not getting enough water in. I had let myself get thirsty and I went to the vending machine at school and all three water slots on the vending machine were empty. And so I bought a Diet Coke 
and I opened it and I left it on my desk for, it was a three hour class, so I left it on my desk for about an hour trying to let the fizz come out of it and I would sip it slowly and swish it around trying to get the bubbles out before I swallowed it. I have never been so uncomfortable in my life from the bubbles, from the, the carbonation, from the pop, from the soda or the pop or whatever you want to call it. Um, it was terrible and uh, that was, that's been the only time that I've had soda post-op and it was not a comfortable thing. But cut it out. You know, I still still see people drinking Diet Coke, Diet Pepsi and stuff, and it's okay because it's diet. It's not okay. It's not okay. Don't drink soda after surgery. You're specifically told not to, and why risk it? You know, I, I just, we've been given this life-saving gift. Don't sabotage it by drinking soda. You're going to live on water, crystal light, coffee, tea. I mean, I'm back into the into the caffeinated stuff, but I was in the decaf for the longest time. Um, and when I go to a restaurant, I don't like to order water all the time, so I order tea uh, with milk and sweetener. And, you know, that's when I find it hard as in a restaurant because I, I was only ordering water, especially in the summertime. You want something cold to drink, so I would order water. But I would sort of feel bad. But, I mean, they would never have anything that was non-carbonated and sugar-free. And although I can tolerate sugar, I choose not to eat it most or drink it, especially drink it. I don't want to drink my calories. So I choose not to drink sugar, and I definitely choose no carbonation. Um, next tip or trick or whatever would be to start eating off small plates. Don't go buying little forks, little spoons, sippy cups, little bowls, baby bowls. Don't go buying all that stuff pre-op. You don't need it. But just eat off, the, off of bread and butter plates. I see too many people going and buying all these little utensils and little cups and little bowls. And, oh, don't waste your money. You will use them for maybe a week post-op while you're in the pureed food stage. But really, what's the point? Unless you're going to spend your life, you know, eating out of baby bowls using baby utensils, there's no point. Just get into the habit. If you need to weigh your or measure your food, I mean, that's whatever's comfortable for you. I never did. But, um, no, maybe not never. In the beginning stages, I did. I would measure just so I could get an idea of how to eyeball it, right? So now I eyeball it, but I use bread and butter plates. I don't use big plates. Or I use um, a cereal bowl. Um, if I'm having something, you know, or now I have soup, I use a, I use a mug, I use a coffee cup for soup. Um, don't go wasting your money buying all that useless crap. Next tip is protein drinks. I have a protein powder that I use. I use it very infrequently now, although I'm, I'm going to start using it a little more because I'm on this, um, mission to lose 10 pounds before the new year. Um, make sure you taste your protein powders. If you go to a supplement store, um, here close to us we have Popeyes, um, they'll let you taste them before you buy them because your taste buds will change post-op. And what you used to like pre-op, you may not like post-op. So before you go buying these ginormous tubs of protein powder, um, make sure you taste them. I see too many people who've bought, you know, six or seven different brands of protein powder and they don't like them. And they sit in their cupboard and they're, you know, 20 bucks a tub, if that, you know, maybe sometimes more. And, the, you know, they're sitting on a gold mine of protein powders. Same with protein bars. Don't buy a giant box of protein bars until you taste one first. Buy one for three bucks and taste it. And then if you like it, buy the package of them. Don't go stocking up on all that stuff before surgery because you don't know what it's going to taste like after. Wait until by the time you're at that stage afterwards where you can eat them, you will be fully mobile and well enough to go to the store and taste them before you buy them. Don't stock up on that stuff. You don't need to. Um, unless you live in some remote community where grocery stores are only open, you know, 9 to 3, there will be an opportunity for you to get to the grocery store or get to the nutrition store so you can taste these things post-op. Again, don't stock up on the pre-op. You don't know what they're going to taste like to you after. Um... I must be at number one by now. What would be my number one tip or trick or piece of advice? There's so many. I'm just trying to think of the best one. Um, I 
I think my number one, and this is sort of superficial, but my number one piece of advice is to keep one pair of pants, one, from your old self. Get rid of everything else. Everything else. Don't even look at it. Throw it in a garbage bag. Donate it. Give it to a friend. Find the support group. Do the clothing swaps, but keep one pair of pants. Because we all want that picture where we are standing in one leg and someone else is standing in the other. I have kept one pair of pants. And uh, before this year is out, I will take a picture of me and my husband in that pair of pants. Because I have lost now 170 pa- 169 pounds, which is more than my husband weighs. So I want to get us both in that pair of pants. So my number one piece of advice would be to keep that one pair of pants that you can get into with someone. I already took one of me and my son in a pair of pants. I put it on my um, my journey so far video. I put the picture on there. But yeah, that would be my number one. But I think um, if I think of anything else, I'll let you know. Um, sorry this ran so long. I didn't expect it to. I'm at like 16 minutes now. So I will let you go. And I will be back to keep you updated on my last 10 pounds. Let's make this a mission. I'll update every week now to let you know how I'm doing with this last 10 pounds. I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye.